Welcome to Smart People on Ice. I'm Alex Benick. Today's show should be a lot of fun. We've got one of the more colorful characters in the field of distributed systems and fellow Rhode Island native, Andy Gross. Hey Alex, thanks for having me. 401 is in the house today. Yeah, That's the area code for Rhode Island, not the <laughs> HTTP error code, which it has been confused with in my, uh, in my experience in the past. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Andy is currently on the core storage team at Twitter, uh, but is probably best known for his work uh, as the chief architect at Basho, which is the company behind REOC, the open source distributed key value store. Uh, and before that was at Akamai and Apple and has been on the inside of some pretty interesting systems. Um, so before we get into, you know, that and, you know, life uh, kicking out the tweets, um, you know, we like to start at the beginning. So take me back, you know, coming up on the mean streets of Barrington, Rhode Island. How'd you get into computers and technology in the first place? Yeah, the mean, the mean streets of Barrington. Um, I was lucky enough to have a, uh, a dad who was, uh, a hobbyist for these sort of things. So I, I can't remember if it was my third or fourth birth birthday, but it was uh, very early. I was very young. Um, and for Christmas, we got a VIC-20, uh, Commodore VIC-20, uh, and later a Commodore 64. Yeah. Um, and what, what we used to do was type uh, programs in out of the back of actual dead tree magazines that would come in the mail, uh, which were basically just pages upon pages of raw machine code. And so you'd spend an afternoon or a weekend just typing in numbers and hoping you didn't make a mistake. And at the end, uh, if you're lucky, you got a Space Invaders game or whatever. And uh, early on, and this is before we had any um, durable storage, uh, which would eventually be in the form of a tape drive, like yeah. a cassette tape. And old school stuff. Yeah, you were hardcore back then. On my Commodore 64, I was only doing like basic and a lot of logo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so this was, this was all in basic. Yeah. Um, but my, my father had spent a long time typing in a game and I played it, uh, got sick of it and just shut the computer off. Uh, <laughs> ruining, you know, a weekend's uh, worth of work. So I yeah. learned pretty early on, you know, uh, what volatile memory uh, was all about. So uh, eventually, you know, through high school, after doing dishwashing stuff and pizza delivery stuff, I got a series of jobs where you're basically, you know, sort of the only tech person in a company that's not a technology company, like a local manufacturing company sure. uh, or whatever. And you get asked to fix printers and anything that get, basically gets plugged in. But um, I, you know, did a series of visual basic, you know, sort of custom order entry systems for these companies. Um, and you know, that was my sort of first step up into programming as a career, although obviously I don't really list these jobs sure. on my resume. <laughs> I didn't see them on LinkedIn uh, when I was looking at your history. But you ultimately ended up, you know, ended up uh, leaving Rhode Island, going to Connecticut, and then getting pulled back uh, into the early days of Akamai. How did all that happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So eventually, for some reason, I got sick of Visual Basic. I can't understand <laughs> why. And... Um, uh, decided I wanted to be an English teacher. So I was going to UConn um, and uh, looking for a job again. I said, oh, I can do this computer stuff. I worked in a computer lab and met this really cool guy who became my sort of mentor. Um, and this was around the time where the first versions of Red Hat were coming out. Uh, so I'm you know, a couple semesters away from a degree in English um, when I got really into Linux. And uh, we went to a conference. I filled out something for a free shirt, which happened to be a consulting company. And I get a call from the consulting company that says, hey, come work uh, at Akamai. Uh, crazy, sort of lucky, serendipitous turn of events. Um, so I bailed. Uh, and this was uh, summer of 1999. So you were starting to see definitely, you know, sort of in the middle of the bubble. So I, I sort of looked at what the salaries for teachers were, uh, even in Connecticut, and uh, said, you know, I'm out of here. Uh, so I ended up, and you know, I really didn't know how significant and, and again, lucky I was at the time. Uh, I ended up uh, employee number like 60 or 70 uh, at Akamai in Cambridge. I just sort of sought out uh, opportunities to improve things, and I did some scripting, and I heard an executive complaining once that he couldn't list the members of a mailing list. So I wrote a little CGI script to do that, and you know, through enough of those, uh, the people in engineering, um, who I would later go on to, to start Basha with, uh, took notice and, and you know, got me out of IT uh, and into, into engineering, and that's you know, where I think my 
sort of current career really, sure. really started. Yeah. Some people may not be aware there's sort of a technical uh, lineage between what you know Basho ultimately imp implemented and some of the foundational technologies that you know Danny Lewin and Tom Layton and those guys invented to make Akamai possible. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure, absolutely. Um, so Danny Lewin's master's thesis was on a concept called consistent hashing um, as it applied to relieving hotspots on the web. Um, if you're old enough, you might remember uh, the Victoria's Secret fashion show on the internet, uh, live streamed in 1999, and it was a huge failure. And at the time, you, you have to go back, people weren't sure the internet was a viable place for commerce yet, right? And, and this was viewed by, you know, internet, uh, people who were sort of bearish on the internet in general uh, as evidence that that you know, no, right. we're we're gonna toy. yeah, we we go to bookstores and buy books, and that's what how it's gonna be. Um, so, uh, Danny Lewin's master thesis, consistent hashing, uh, was and is really uh, the fundamental concept behind how content delivery networks work, uh, and later on, you know, how distributed databases like the NoSQL offerings and Reoc included. Um, and all sorts of different distributed systems work. What it, what it really uh, does is just allow you to uh, store things and retrieve things on a large set of computers such that computers can go down uh, and the cluster of computers can be expanded uh, or made smaller. And when, it, when that happens, you don't have to reshuffle everything. Right. I really think consistent hashing is one of those sort of, you know, one or two you know, once or twice a decade, you get one of these amazingly elegant, sort of uh, simple, obvious things that, that are uh, discovered. Um, and I think consistent hashing is, is definitely one of those.